Welcome to the Urban Survivor channel. And in this video, I'm gonna be walking you through a blackout kit that I built for my home that's designed to provide illumination and keep my devices charged, whether the power outage only lasts a few hours or if there's some kind of catastrophic grid down situation and I'm stuck without power for months. The items in this kit have been chosen because they have numerous capabilities that would be useful in this type of situation and excellent run times. And together they can provide me with 11,623 hours or approximately 484 days of continuous light. Plus there are a few off-grid items that can be used to charge devices that can keep you going indefinitely. Before we dive in, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you like survival kits and gear reviews, please consider subscribing to the Urban Survivor channel. And also make sure to jump into the comment section and join the discussion because a lot of people give excellent feedback and there's a lot of great information there. If you want to pick up any of these items in the kit, you can find links in the description, which will also help support the channel. All right, so the first thing I want to share with you guys is the storage case for the home blackout kit, which is the Sheffield 50 caliber ammo case. I went with this case for a few different reasons, including the fact that it's airtight, it's really durable and waterproof, which will help protect many of the sensitive electronic items in the kit, but it also has an all metal construction, which will also shield the electronics from an EMP. And it's nice to have an extra layer of protection for the electronics that you lie on. It's also got a nice handle on top, which makes it really easy to carry. So lanterns are a great source of 360 degree illumination and are perfect for lighting up rooms and other small spaces while freeing up your hands. And the best lantern that I've ever owned is hands down the BLF LT1. This lantern runs on four 18650 batteries and is jam packed with excellent features from variable output to color temperature control. But the main reason I selected this lantern for this kit is that it has a really low output on its moonlight setting and an incredibly long runtime of 2,160 hours, which is approximately 90 days or about three months. This mode provides a nice calm source of light, which is just bright enough to light up close spaces, but for the times when you need more light, it does have a max output of 600 lumens, which is plenty to light up a kitchen, living room, or a bedroom. This is the newly upgraded Olight Olbulb MC, which is a multicolor orb shaped lantern that has eight different lighting modes, including a warm white mode, RGB modes, and a signaling mode. There's a low and high version of the warm white mode, which is a very comfortable color that's calm and easy on the eyes. The red mode is great for preserving your night vision and keeping a lower profile, and the red flashing mode is also great for signaling. It has a built in 630 milliamp hour battery and is capable for running for 40 hours on a single charge. It's nice to have a backup to your primary lantern that you can also give to somebody or use in another room in case you need to have multiple locations lit with hands-free diffuse light at the same time. Another great option for a hands-free lighting source is a headlamp, and my personal favorite is the Nightcore NU25, which is one of the lightest headlamps on the market. It has a handful of different lighting modes, including a white light, which has a high 360 lumen mode, and a low output mode with one lumen and a 160 hour runtime. It also has a low red light mode, a red signaling mode, and a high CRI mode, which is great for up close tasks. I like to keep some of the smaller items in the kit stored in this Maxpedition mini pocket organizer. This organizer has a clamshell style opening and some elastic webbing inside that's perfect for keeping all kinds of small gear together. The first item I want to talk about in this organizer is my primary light, which is the Olight S2R Baton 2. When considering a primary light for a blackout kit, you want something that offers a good blend of high outputs, different modes, and long run times that's well suited for mostly indoor, but also some mid-range outdoor use. The S2R Baton 2 is powered by a single 18650 battery and has a deep carry double-sided pocket clip and also a magnetic tail for hands for use. It has a TIR lens that delivers a well-balanced beam with a huge flood and a max output of 1,150 lumens and a throw of 135 meters on its highest output. It also has an incredibly low 0.5 lumen moonlight mode, which has a max runtime of 1,440 hours, which makes it excellent for long-term grid down use. Next up, we have another item from Olight that's relatively new, which is a Baton 3 with the customized power bank. It's good to have a backup light in your kit, which you can use in case you have problems with your primary light, or you can give it to somebody else who might need a light. 
Despite its small size, the Baton 3 still delivers some excellent performance. This slide also has a deep carry style pocket clip and a magnetic tail, and it's powered by a 16340 battery. It also has a TIR lens and a max output of 1200 lumens and a throw of 166 meters on its highest output. The Baton 3's Moonlight mode is also 0.5 lumens and has a max runtime of 480 hours or 20 days, which is excellent for a light this size. The great thing about this setup is the Baton 3's custom power bank. This power bank is USB-C rechargeable and is capable of charging the Baton 3 an additional 3.7 times, which provides an additional 74 days or 1,776 hours of runtime to your setup. AA lights are also great to keep around because AA's are one of the most common battery types and you might be able to find some around your house or pick some up from a store. A single AA light that I like a lot that's reasonably priced is the Skillhunt E2A, which is also compatible with a 14500 battery. This light has a max output of 200 lumens on its highest output mode before stepping down to 120 lumens. It also has a low 5 lumen mode, which has a runtime of 45 hours, which is good if you have to use the light for extended periods of time, and it's brighter than the 0.5 lumen moonlight modes on the O-lights in case you need a little higher output. I also keep a handful of different charging cables in here, including a magnetic cable for the O-lights, a USB-C cable which can charge my phone, the BLF LT1 and the Baton 3 charging case, and a micro USB cable that charges a few of the other items that we're going to get to shortly. It's nice to keep some extra 18650 batteries around to power the BLF LT1 and the Olight S2R Baton 2. And to keep the batteries protected and easy to access, I picked up this 18650 storage case from JJC. This case stores six 18650 batteries. It's water resistant and it has a snap closure, which helps to keep the battery secure. It also keeps the contact points from touching each other, which will help prevent the batteries from draining, which is important if you plan to keep this kit in storage. They also make cases for AAA and AA batteries as well. Having ways of lighting up your home that don't require electricity is a great way to add an extra level of protection to your home blackout kit. These emergency candles from SDS burn liquid paraffin that provide a small amount of light and they're just bright enough to read next to as well. These candles are some of the longest burning on the market and have a max burn time of 115 hours each. I like to keep some fire starters in this kit to light the candles, including this case of stormproof UCO matches, which work well in extreme weather conditions, and also a big lighter as backup. Glow sticks are another nice item to have as well that don't require any batteries to operate, and I like to keep about six of them in this kit. These glow sticks from Glowmind can glow for about 12 hours, and in addition to providing some up-close illumination, you can also pick them up in a lot of different colors, which makes them more useful for signaling or marking locations. You can also give these to your kids or other people who may not have any source of light. Having a grid-free way of keeping your devices like your phone, your flashlights, your lanterns and radios, and other electronics charged is really important. This is the 15 watt portable solar panel from Sunjack, which gives you the ability to charge two USB powered devices simultaneously. All you need to do is lay the panel out in the sun and connect your devices to charge them. The panel itself is rugged and durable and has a coating of ETFE, which makes it weather, shock, dust, and drop proof. It also has plenty of charging surface area and actually charges devices quite quickly compared to most of the other similar size panels on the market. The 15 watt portable solar panel from Sunjack with a power bank which has a 10,000 mAh capacity and can be used to charge small USB powered electronic devices and can charge some smartphones up to five times. This power bank has a micro USB input, a USB-C input output combo, and a USB output which you can use to charge your devices. You can also charge this power bank with Sunjack solar panel and you can pick up the power bank by itself or together with the panel. Another item I can connect to the solar panel or the power bank is the XTAR MC1, which is a simple charger that can be used to charge many of the spare batteries in this kit. And with this, I can keep my 18650s charged to keep the lanterns and some of the flashlights going indefinitely. I also like to keep a spare USB car charger as well in case I might be able to get some power from a vehicle that can be used to charge some of my devices. Being able to find out what's happening during a power outage is vital information to have. And during a power outage, you're not gonna be able to get news on your TV, your computer, or maybe even your smartphone, which is why it's really important to have an emergency radio as backup. This radio from Prepared for X can tune into the weather band, which provides frequent updates about the weather. And you can also tune into your local AM and FM radio stations as well. In addition to the radio, it also has two different sources of light 
and also a USB output, which you can use to charge your phone and other small electronic devices. Now we're gonna take a second to tally up all of the hours of illumination that the items in this kit can provide. The BLF LT1 has a max runtime of 2,160 hours, and I've set aside four extra 18650s, which will double the runtime to 4,320 hours. The O-Bulb can run for 40 hours on a single charge. The Olight S2R Baton 2 has a max runtime of 1,440 hours, and I've got two extra 18650s for this light, which will provide an additional 4,320 hours of runtime. The Baton 3 can run for 480 hours on a single charge and when you add the Baton 3 case you gain an additional 1776 hours of illumination. The Skill Hunt E2A can run for 45 hours on a single AA and I have four extra AA's in this kit for a total of 225 hours. The Nightcore NU25 can run for 160 hours on a single charge of its built-in battery. Each emergency candle has a 115 hour runtime and there's two in this kit for a total of 230 hours. Each glow stick has a 12 hour runtime and there's six here for a total of 72 hours. If I used one source of light at a time, I'd be able to run for 11,623 hours or approximately 484 days continuously not including using the battery from the power bank, the emergency radio, or the solar panel. Hopefully this video gave you some good ideas of the items that you can add to your blackout kit. Let me know your thoughts on this kit in the comments, and if you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching, and until next time.